Hi, I'm Bonnie Yankoviak, the Chief of Teaching, Learning, and Leading, and I'm here with Jen Rivera, the Director of Online Learning and the Remote Academy, and our Superintendent, Dr. Margaret Murata. And we're here today to answer some frequently asked questions, to give you updates and support our families, our staff, and our students. So our first question goes to Dr. Murata. Dr. Murata, when should I choose, choose a learning model? So we currently have a survey out to all families um, to choose a learning model. And we are asking people to, to choose a learning model now. We know that people may have a change in circumstance or there could be a change in the health conditions um, across the state or, or in Haverhill, but um, we need to do some planning. Uh, we have 8,000 children coming back to school in one way or another. So we need to at least have an idea of the rough numbers of people who want to pull into each of the different academies. Uh, so we are asking people to let us know now. There will be some room for, for movement until September 1. I think right about September 1, we are gonna try to freeze it up um, and put it on hold until uh, the trimester mark. But we are asking people please to respond now so that we can plan. Uh, those people who don't answer the survey will be getting calls um, from this school next week. Um, we just want to try to, uh, to be able to plan effectively and, and have good options for all our kids. Thank you so much. Mrs. Rivera, this one's for you. What is the Remote Academy and what will the curriculum look like? Okay, so the Remote Learning Academy is a learning community that provides remote learning opportunities to students in grades K to eight that align with the goals, curriculum, and objectives of Haverhill Public Schools. The Remote Learning Academy will operate on the same schedule as Haverhill Public Schools, and it will also offer flexibility for students to learn when it's convenient for families. All students that are enrolled in the Remote Learning Academy will engage in interactive standards-based lessons that will allow them to learn and grow. The Remote Learning Academy will offer synchronous, which are live lessons, and asynchronous lessons using Google Meet, Google Classroom, and other G Suite tools. There will also be recorded lessons for students and families to access. Support will also be provided through email and or video conferencing. Grading will follow district guidelines and rely on principles of standards-based grading. Thank you so much, Mrs. Rivera. One question we have with that a lot is, will our, my child automatically be put in the remote academy if I feel not comfortable with in-person? So in order to opt into that, you, you really need to take the survey because right now the default model for students um, not choosing will be in-person learning. So you have to make sure that you opt out um, and we're actively, like Dr. Murata said, please fill out the survey so that we can plan accordingly. Great, thank you. And Dr. Murata, do all students have to wear masks when they um, are in school and can they take them off at some point? So thank you, Bonnie. Yeah, I know there's a lot of confusion around this. Haverhill's um, decision is slightly different from the decision of the Department of Education. Um, we are, our school committee has decided to be a little bit more restrictive around the mask wearing. Um, we will have our pre-K and K um, and up to grade two, all, all students really, will be wearing masks in the Haverhill Public Schools. There will be opportunities for mask breaks um, built into the day, as well as for kids to have in, you know, independent, if somebody needs one, um, to have a mask break. Um, but students will have to be socially distanced. Um, many of the mask breaks will be outside. Um, so we're, we're working on uh, schedules for that in our schools. But yes, all students will need to wear masks according to the policy. Great, thank you. Um, and maybe Mrs. Rivera, you could tell us a little bit about the grading policy. Sure, so the grading policy for both remote learning and also in-person learning follows our district and school policies that rely on standards-based grading along with requirements for homework, class participation, and classwork. Report cards will be posted to the parent portal electronically. Great, and maybe next we could talk a little bit more about scheduling during the month and our daily schedules. Dr. Murata, what will the details of the phasing in be available? So we're working on that currently, Bonnie. As you know, we had one plan in mind and the school committee um, decided that we should take a little bit longer um, to phase things in. Um, you know, and we certainly appreciate that. Planning time is always welcome. I know it makes it a little bit more difficult uh, for, for families, which was our original thought. Um, we know all kids will be in school by mid-October. 
um, but we are working on currently uh, what that plan exactly will look like. And probably by the time we have this video update next week, we'll be able to share that with families. Such good information coming out for everyone. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Rivera, could you tell us, will the start and end times for in-person hybrid and remote learning at the secondary and elementary levels, will they be the same? Yes, the start times will be the same and existing school hours will be followed for, for both models. Um, there will also be office hours and time to connect with individual students or small groups um, because that's, that's been built in as well. Um, so it will allow for flexibility, but also allowing for formal instruction. Thank you so much. And Dr. Murata, one big worry for families is Will all students within a family go to school on the same days? So ideally, yes, that is our, our plan for people. There are a couple of uh, catches that we need to sort of be careful about and we ask people, families to sort of highlight for us as they fill out the survey or as they talk to their um, schools. Um, if you have students in different schools, please let us know, you know, which day you would prefer, which days you would prefer to assure um, that your children across schools, if that's what you want, are in the same cohort. It's a little bit easier for us when kids are in the same school to flag that when they're in different, different schools, it's more difficult. And also we know that many of our, our families have children that might have different last names. Um, and you know, we assume or, or think that the, the schools know that they're siblings, but sometimes somebody doesn't catch it when they're going through a list. So just be sure to highlight that um, for either your survey or when you speak to your school so that we can accommodate you to the best of our ability. Thank you so much. And we really do appreciate you trying to accommodate all our families and making people feel secure with that. Um, one more question for just the daily schedule. Will there be before and after school programs provided during these learning days? So yes, we're, we're, and, and we're actually in conversations with a number of community providers um, the Y, uh, Boys and Girls Club, uh, the YWCA, um, as well as some of our local churches who are interested in potentially providing some additional space uh, for, for remote learning. Um, so we, we expect to both have before and after schools as we did previously uh, programs, um, as well as potentially some uh, remote learning space uh, for folks in the um, opposite cohort for their remote days. So we're working on that. And again, we've got a lot of balls in the air. We hope to have more details on that next week. Great, thank you so much. And next we'll be talking with Mr. Burns a little bit about the high school to get some information and updates on that. Hi, we're back with Mr. Glenn Burns, the principal of Haverhill High School. And we have a few questions for Mr. Burns. Mr. Burns, what does remote learning and hybrid look like at the high school level? So at the high school, it, it's going to look a little bit different uh, to give our, our students the opportunity to take any one of the 355 courses that they typically take. So we'll be looking to, um, to live stream the instruction or, or, or the whiteboard um, from the actual classroom, from the in-person learning so that students get the, the same content and are able to take their, their classes and reach their requirements for uh, their academies or any certificates that they may need um, to, any certificate that they may get through their programs. Great, thank you so much. We know you've been working really hard with your team to make sure everything is ready for the fall for our students in high school. One question that's been on everyone's mind is, what will fall sports look like in Haverhill High School? So last week, uh, the Office of Environmental Affairs did release a K through 12 document um, with, with some guidelines, but those are not um, complete. Right now, we're still waiting on uh, the Department of Education as well as um, the MIAA to release uh, their fall sports lists and, and rules. Um, they, they are um, having a meeting this week, uh, so we're hopeful that we'll have that information shortly. Thank you so much, and I'm sure we'll have you back next week with updates on that. Um, one other big question for parents and for students is, will there be um, parking behind the building and the ice hockey, and will there be enough parking for students? Um, so as of right now, there, there is most certainly enough parking. Uh, we, we encourage everybody to contact Michelle Bell, uh, the secretary in the 200s office, or Tamara Strauss, the AP, uh, in the 200s office. All parking passes. Um, and signups are done through the uh, 200s office by those two individuals. 
Thank you so much, Mr. Burns. And thank you so much and your team for working so hard to get ready for our students. We appreciate you. Oh, thank you. And we look forward to, uh, to seeing our kids again. And we're going to go back with some questions to Dr. Murata. Dr. Murata, what do you think that the arrival will look like in schools? And can students be dropped off? Well, I think that the arrival at schools is going to look um, a lot more sort of controlled than it did in the past. We had, you know, sort of free time for kids before school in the morning on the playgrounds. And obviously, um, we can't do that any longer. Um, kids will be outside, but they will have to remain, you know, with their cohort or their classroom. Um, and, and we'll have folks outside to monitor that and support that. Um, we have, as I think folks have heard by now, um, redone uh, some of the cement work and um, enable ourselves to sort of make a transition around the back of the four elementary schools um, to make drop off and pick up much easier. We can do buses in the back and families in the front or vice versa. We're still, still working on that um, to make things move more smoothly. So we're looking forward to that. But families will absolutely be able to drop off their children. Um, we will be having a schedule to do that. And that'll vary a little bit building by building. Um, as each building is a little bit different. Great, thank you so much. And a couple other questions were about technology and resources. Mm -hmm. So our next question was, will appropriate devices be provided to students for blended or remote learning? Sure, yeah, we're very excited. Um, we actually did um, just get a, a another grant um, the other day from the Department of Education. We got a $330,000 grant um, to support our uh, technology, purchase of new technology in our school district. And that's just a fraction of what we've been spending, but it sure, it sure helps. Um, so um, we will have a one-to-one -one, uh, across initiative across the school district, meaning every student um, will have a, a Chromebook uh, to that with them to take home at night if they please, um, if they need to um, from, from uh, I believe it's first grade um, through 12th grade. Our kindergartners, and I think actually it's second grade through 12th grade, I think our kindergartners and our first graders will be um, provided with iPads. Uh, we feel that's a little bit easier um, for them to, to sort of maneuver at that age. Um, but everyone will have a device. Thank you so much. That is exciting news for our families. I know one question that came up was, what about our families that are having internet issues at home? What can they do? Right. So. There are two different sort of internet issues, right? There are the, I don't have internet. Um, and that is, that is an issue, um, you know, that I think the mayor's office and the school system, um, and, and uh, we've been working with, with people individually who either don't have internet or um, have had issues um, with a paying board in the past and therefore have a pass to bill. So we've been working with them and with Comcast um, this e internet essentials program, um, we can do some troubleshooting there with people. Um, and then there's the just, I don't have great internet at my house. And we're finding that sometimes um, people just don't have the right bandwidth or the right amount of power um, to their, their internet and they need to call Comcast and have a conversation with them and, and get that boosted up a little bit. Um, and if people have questions about that, that, um, I think our IT department is going to put out a little sort of FAQ of their own on what, what kind of uh, internet service level you might need for your house. Great, thank you. And um, what platform will, will we be using for remote learning again this year? Yeah, so we're, we're going to continue to use the, the Google, Google Suite, uh, Google Meets, uh, Google Classroom, um, and uh, the, the tools that we have been previously um, using across the school district. We also have, you know, some, some new online programs that we'll be working with families um, and teachers uh, trying to streamline them more than expand them at this point. There was almost um, too many um, and it got a little bit overwhelming. So um, we've tried to pick a, a few um, in each sort of area of, you know, math, ELA, uh, history, whatever, a few websites that we think are really um, well, well done um, and we want to use consistently across the school district. So we'll be having that. Great. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to have two last questions, which is um, about buses and transportation. I know that's something that parents are wor worrying about and thinking about. Will transportation be provided to and from school and how will that look? So transportation will be provided to and from school for people who meet the school committee policy on transportation in terms of, of distance and age. There is a very specific policy 
um, that we will have to follow this year. Uh, I know there's been some controversy in the past and it hasn't always been followed, um, but, but we don't have um, any choice this year given um, our limitations on transportation in terms of uh, social distancing and how many students can be on a bus. We will, to support that, be having bus passes this year. Um, so again, more information on that to come, um, but each student that is uh, eligible to ride the bus will have a bus pass and will need to have it with them every day. And the kids will have to follow the rules on the bus, which means masks at the bus stop or social distancing at the bus stop and always masks on the bus. Um, you know, and, and we do remind parents, but parents will have to in the morning, we'll, we're asking parents to sort of check on their children's health, as I know they all do um, anyways, but maybe before where you might have sent your child to school with a sniffle or, or a low grade fever, um, we're, we're going to have to ask that on those days, um, kids stay home. And I, I know that's a challenge for families, but um, if we're going to sort of stay successful um, with in-person learning, we're going to have to be a little bit hypervigilant about assuring um, that uh, people don't come into the buildings that aren't feeling well. Thank you, Dr. Marauder. And you actually answered our last question, which was, do students have to wear a mask at the bus stop? And they do. Um, and they should have their bus passes. And I know with kindergarten, they always had a bus pass and they would just flip it onto their backpack. So now we'll have all students doing the same thing and they won't lose it. Um, so this ends our questions and answers for today. I'm sure there'll be more updates. Is there anything else you'd like to say to us before we close? Yeah, I mean, so we've been able to collect these um, questions from the Reopen 2020 email and from sort of monitoring uh, Facebook and different social media and just hearing sort of the same questions over and over again from, from families. If people have a question that they feel sort of pertains to more than just them, a sort of broad question, um, we would ask you to send it to our Reopen 2020 email um, and just write question for video stream on there so that we can be sure to answer all your questions. And I, I know people are, are frustrated um, that we don't have all the answers, um, but, but we don't have all the answers. Um, I think that you know, we're living in a time where there's just a lot of gray area. Um, we are doing the very best we can um, to answer the questions, um, to have protocols and, and safety procedures in, in place. We had uh, hundreds of kids in the summer program um, in person over the summer. It was very successful. We uh, implemented our protocols. Um, they went well. A lot of kids had fun and learned. It was both in person and remote, and we learned a lot of things. Um, and we feel confident moving into the, the fall um, that we can do a good job. Um, but we are going to move along a little bit slowly and make sure that we get things right. So we appreciate um, people's patience with us as we move forward. Um, and I, I guess I'm hearing from families. I think the one number one question is, I, I don't have enough information yet to make a decision. And I'm gonna ask people to make a decision. Um, anyways, because we need to plan and if it's, it's sort of an endless cycle. So I think people have to make their best uh, estimate of where they wanna move for their child's um, learning. And if they feel like they're not ready to, to be in person, that's okay. They can sign up for the remote learning. Um, and they can um, move on in to in-person learning um, at the trimester, or at the quarter mark, at the high school, and, and it's okay to switch between models, but we do need to ask people to pick a model. Thank you so much. And if we continue to support each other, work together, I know that we can get through this. So thank you for your support, and thank you for leading us and the Harold Public Schools. Thank you, Bonnie.